The government mentality we are continually being fed is that we can grow as a nation by selling our assets, privatisation, reducing income supports, sacking workers, cutting wages, pensions and allowances, while the cost of living continually increases and taxes are raised. This is a bald-faced lie and it's completely obscene. Australians need adequate levels of income and opportunity to meet their needs, otherwise Australians do not consume goods, do not engage services or indulge in personal enjoyments like recreational activities, dining out, holidays and they certainly don't purchase non-essential items. This strips income from all types of business and will assist in, with the increase of job losses if not outright business failures. Such breakdowns lead to higher unemployment, increased benefit dependency, not job creation and a buoyant economy. In fact, austerity measures have been denounced around the world as a completely failed system. And any claim to the contrary is false because anyone with any sense at all knows that people with less money do not buy more, they don't invest, they don't grow, they certainly don't branch out or take financial risks because they simply can't afford to and the things that they don't do are what we need them to be doing to create ongoing opportunities here in Australia. Now we need to stop cowering and waiting for yet another overseas buyer to come along. Australia needs to start thinking big. We need big projects, big developments and the opportunities to build it must go to Australian workers. And Australian companies, first and foremost, that's how we get growth. That's how we get jobs and that's how we build a strong economy. Instead, we're hearing that we need to sell our resources, wind back, and sell our nation's entire soul and identity because they tell us to our faces that we just aren't smart enough, big enough, or strong enough as a nation to go it alone. Well, that's the greatest lie of all, and it's a lie because they started telling it to us back when our population was many millions less than it is today, and nobody knew any better. It's a sad and sorry holdover from outdated conservative thinking, and it needs to be kicked to the curb. One of the more disgusting conservative attacks came in the form of an idea. Now Malcolm Turnbull said, we need entrepreneurs from overseas on 457 visas to stimulate Australia. Malcolm Turnbull is both a liar and an idiot, and he seems determined to make sure this country doesn't rise to prosperity under its own innovation and ingenuity. Australia has many, many brilliant people in science, technology, industry, aquaculture, manufacturing and so many more areas that it just boggles the mind. Australian innovation has it literally, in some cases, changed the face of the world we live in. So why aren't we backing it? Because our small-minded government cares more about pandering to overseas interests and all their lovely donation money rather than ensuring that Australians are supported to create and sell our own ideas and products under government market protection so that we can rise, so that we can build, so that we can prosper through our own initiative and hard work. But no, as always, for Australians innovators, it's cap in hand and beg for subsidies. The endless government indifference that's been extended to our own people with ingenious plans and ideas that are ready to go, it's been absolutely sickening. Most, if not all, get turned away, and then we're forced to buy back what we should have been selling after the designs end up overseas. This is how it's been now for as long as I can remember. And I'm sure you watching this have your own memories of, of a, an innovation or a product that was once ours, but gets lost to overseas companies who then get tens of millions in profits, a new industry and hundreds of jobs. And us, well, we get one more thing to buy so someone else benefits. Now this moronic pra practice, it's, it's got to stop. They don't fund or support our own innovators but happily sell everything we have and throw billions of taxpayer dollars at overseas entities that are here purely to exploit all that we have, which they so badly want. And then many of them don't even pay tax, and our politicians go on television and lie to cover it up. And they honestly think that we're so stupid we can't work out why the money and jobs are vanishing here in Australia. So we have a debt. It's small enough so that the developed world still envies us for it. But they can't scare people with that fact, so they lie to those who simply believe whatever the Saturday or morning papers say. Now, if we're going to have a debt, and we usually do, by the way, um, in fact, many of our best times came while under a deficit, because historically, when we spent money to build and create prosperity at home, it happened. So, let's get back to building. 
let's start funding the CSIRO to put us on the leading edge in research and development, not cut their funding and grind them down so that we trail behind the world and develop far less than we're truly capable of. We should build the NBN in fibre. We should be building high-speed rail. We should be building dams and pipelines in the monsoonal north to aid development and increase fresh fruit production in the dry southern areas. We should have government-owned and operated infrastructure. We should be building affordable housing, emergency accommodation for those in need. We should be protecting our industries and going all out to create new ones. And everything we need to do, all these things should be done by Australian workers and Australian companies should be selling Australian-made materials to build it all. And if nobody's making something we need, well, here's a new idea. Let's help get another industry started and begin producing those items too. Imports and overseas trade. Now, I've been asking for 15 years, why is it our place to surrender our potential jobs, manufacturing and resources, also corporations on the other side of the world get to make another billion or two dollars for their shareholders? We don't need more imports. We need less. We need to begin winding back our government-generated dependency on imported goods and encourage Australians to again build and do for ourselves as we once did. We can do it. We have everything we need to do it. But what we don't have is the political will to make it happen. Yes, thinking big costs money, but it also creates longevity through long-term jobs, new industries, new opportunities, and it generates local and federal wealth. Wealth which goes straight back into Australian pockets, Australian businesses, Australian taxes, and that's what boosts an economy. Cuts, sell-offs and sacking, they erode an economy. And, and why is simple? Because sacking people and putting them on the dole is not saving money. Permitting major industries to close and their codependent businesses to fail does not save money. Letting industries vanish overseas while laying off hundreds of our workers does not save money. It creates poverty and welfare dependency, and that costs money. And any deliberate political support of the sack and sell ideology is not governing for the people. That's corporate brokers doing what they're told. And the latest attack is on our workers, who are being told penalty rates must go. Recently, they even tried to tell us our wages are too high. Because... Why? Because we don't have an economy that's as bad as the undeveloped countries they intend to let flood our markets with inferior goods? Are these people insane? And now, now they're after unions. They hope to destroy the, one of the few things that's left keeping our wages and work conditions safe. Well, not on our watch. And not while Australians with memories longer than last week's headlines have got a voice. Yes, it's true, some unions and officials are corrupt, and we don't argue that fact because it is true. But it's the few, not the many, so by all means, sack and jail the corrupt. But let's get the honest ones back to work, the way they want to work for us, the way we need them to work for us, protecting our rights, our wages, our safety and our future employment. And for the record, just because you're not a union member, it doesn't mean that there isn't a union delegate at your workplace or in your industry making sure that you're being taken care of. So wake up to yourselves please, because in case you fail to notice or it's yet to sink in, the government actually wants you earning less while everything else gets more expensive. Now you sit still for a little while and you seriously consider how that's going to affect your quality of life and your future plans. It's beyond time we said no to these liars, rogues and thieves manipulating our lives. This is Australia, guys, and in Australia, we have never feared for our future or doubted our ability to provide for ourselves and our families. But far too many of us now do. We have a government planning to lower us to the standard of countries that have envied us for decades. And if you're not asking yourself why, you really should be. Because as I speak, they're busy stripping away or selling off the last legal rights and protections that we have under free trade deals. These same people have for over a decade been busy drafting trade agreements which sell off our jobs, our minerals, our profits, our industries and our future. And it's all been done in a closed room in secret. They don't care about us. And all our protests and outrage against what they're doing to us and our country 
Well, they continue to go unheard. Australia now heads towards 1 million unemployed. Over 40% of our workforce is now under casualisation. And that number's growing. And there's no clear plan ahead, except sell more of what we have and need to retain in order to grow. The time of corporate tax grabs, greed, sackings and sell-offs needs to be over. And those responsible for it, well, their time controlling us and our lives, that needs to be over too. Thanks for watching.